Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Constance Carroll. One, one, one of the best things that has happened to me today is that the speaker before me is exactly my height, so I don't have to go fighting with uh, uh, microphones. Well, good morning and buenos dias. That was so lame. Good morning and buenos dias. Uh, the, now, the buenos dias is for um, a, a, a reason. I am now learning Spanish. I'm in my sixth month of studying Spanish. And so, um, okay. and so I have been tormenting my entire staff with this. Um, they are sick and tired of it, uh, but I tell them if it's good for me, it's good for them. I am so pleased that the All People's Celebration leaders invited me to speak with you today since uh, this is one of my favorite events, one of the most important events in San Diego. Uh, years ago, this event was sponsored by the National Conference for Community and Justice. Do any of you remember that? Yes. And um, uh, I was even uh, fortunate enough to chair the event for a few years uh, in a row. But when the um, NCCJ uh, was... Um, uh, Dis discontinued both nationally and locally in San Diego, a group of very concerned community members worked very, very hard to keep this event alive. And I really would like to congratulate Andrea Guerrero and all of the people who are involved in making this community event, because it really is a community event, come back to life and prosper and look at it now. So congratulations to all of you. As the uh, community speaker this morning, I will be talking about education. But first, uh, first, I want to mention what Dr. Martin Luther King meant when he spoke about community. Dr. King embraced the utopian notion of what was called the beloved community. But unlike the philosophers before him, he shaped it as a very practical reality and something that we could achieve if we all work together to achieve it. Dr. King said the end, the purpose of the beloved community is reconciliation, the end is redemption, the end is the creation of the beloved community. In his view, the beloved community was a world of people that was free of racism, free of violence, free of corruption, and full of respect full of civility, and full of love for each other. Such a world, such a community, he felt, was essential in supporting the best in our human nature, in nurturing our better angels, and that's what we are all about today. Another great man, this one in the 19th century, also talked about the significance of an, of an enlightened community and by emphasizing the importance of education in that community. Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was born a slave in Talbot County on the eastern shore of Maryland in 1818. I'm from Maryland, and he is a hero uh, to all of us uh, uh, there. He was born at a time when it was illegal, when it was actually a crime to teach a slave to read or write or learn numeracy. It was a crime punishable by a harsh sentence. And the reason for that, of course, was the fear that if slaves learned, became literate, uh, slaves would know too much and would possibly rebel. Frederick Douglass taught himself, night after night, how to read. And he developed a plan to escape. And in 1838, he succeeded. And after that, when he became free, he became an abolitionist, a great orator, a political activist, and the author on the subject of slavery and freedom based upon his own life. How many of you here today are students? Higher. 
Oh, that's a very good representation uh, of students. Thank you so much for coming. Now, I recommend that you students particularly become acquainted with this remarkable man, Frederick Douglass, and read some of his excellent books, which are basically autobiographies. Three books stand out. This is your homework, students. Um, Terea in Spanish. Um, <laughs> The first, the first is the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. The second is my bondage and my freedom. And the third is the life and times of Frederick Douglass. These books offer an excellent background, not only insights into Frederick Douglass, the man, but into in the history of America itself. In every case, he dedicates his ultimate success to education. And here's what he said about education, and given, given his background. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. And reflecting on this, he also said that reading and knowledge are the pathway from slavery to freedom. Now, slavery in America officially ended on January the 1st, 1863, with the issuance of President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. And by the way, President Lincoln was another president who used executive orders when he couldn't get Congress to agree. Just saying, just saying. Ever since then, America has had a turbulent experience with education because of its liberating p potential. All of us here have been and still are involved in our own personal journeys. I know I am. And our journeys involve social justice, uh, employment, and education for the most part. Let me tell you a little bit about my personal journey. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland when it was legally segregated. Slavery was no longer a reality, but its long shadow and the long shadow of Jim Crow were very much in evidence. In Baltimore, there was only one movie theater for African Americans, one restaurant, it was called Clifton's, one theater for live performances, it was called the Royal. Public schools for whites were numbered under 100, for blacks, over 100. I went to public school 142. And of course, even the churches were segregated. Strangely, however, it was a warm and comfortable environment. It was a closed society of African American people who knew each other where the, the crime rates were very low. However, advancement in the broader society was very difficult because the society was so bifurcated in terms of privilege. Then in 1954, there was an explosion. The Supreme Court decided the case Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas in favor of the plaintiffs due to the excellent arguments provided by uh, attorney Thurgood Marshall and the excellent NAACP uh, legal team with him. Thurgood Marshall was a friend of my family uh, and um, I, I got to admire him uh, immensely. The decision ended the type of se segregation that was de jure, the legal aspect of seg segregation. And I remember this very well uh, because it ushered in an area, a, ver a very difficult era of um, uh, integration. Now, I don't mean to age myself here because I know what you're all thinking. 1954? She can't remember that. She's so young. Right. Oh. Well, I do remember it. What followed was a turbulent effort uh, to implement the new laws of segregation, and that was very, very difficult because the de jure segregation was replaced by de facto segregation, which is still alive and well in the United States of America. There's a wonderful wor word, from the word from the world of art, and that word is pentimento. And pentimento describes a phenomenon uh, whereby often when, painted, when paintings fade 
or when they're x-rayed, one can see that there was another painting underneath, either an entire painting or pieces of the painting. A very interesting phenomenon. And I think this is an excellent term to use for when we are in America today. We have definitely made enormous progress. However, the racial explosions and tensions that frequently erupt do so because beneath the veneer of our progress lies another reality. The former reality of segregation as well as the discriminatory notions that led to Jim Crow and to uh, slavery. They're just there, a pentimento below the surface uh, of our lives in America. San Diego also had its struggle with integrating education. How many of you know about the Lemon Grove incident? Raise your hands. About half, that's very good. Uh, in, um, you get a B plus as a group. In Lemon Grove, in San Diego County, there was a, a tremendous uh, issue uh, re revolving around the discrimination against Mexican Americans and, uh, and uh, Mexican um, uh, res uh, uh, workers. And a school was built so that the children of Mexicans would not have to, would not be allowed to attend the main white school. A separate school was built for them. Uh, and a lawsuit was brought in the name of Roberto Alvarez uh, against that. And on March 30th, 1931, not that long ago, the Superior Court of San Diego County uh, ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, arguing that uh, it was discriminatory. Now, part of the reason was odd, and, and that was uh, the prevailing argument was that under the California Education Code, Mexicans were considered to be white. And uh, however, this case was important because it was the first desegregation case of major import in America. Thurgood Marshall and others used it as the structure and used the arguments from it uh, in the uh, Supreme Court case, Brown versus the Board of, of um, Education. Now, over the years, we have definitely made progress, particularly in education, uh, but we've also had tremendous challenges. The quality of K-12 education has continued to plague American cities, nurtured by underfunding and low expectations. Universities and colleges, while prospering academically, are burdened by the amount of attention they must play, pay to redress of these particular uh, problems. Now we've known uh, after what, watching federal gimmick after gimmick, the worst one being, forgive me, um, uh, no child left behind, these, these gimmicks don't work. We know what works. What works is a triad of good teachers, good facilities, and high standards. It always works, a simple uh, equation. And um, our local school district, San Diego Unified School District, is working hard to make progress in this regard. In higher education, we are fortunate in San Diego to have excellent world-class universities and community colleges collectively educating each year over 350,000 students. They do so using the triad I just mentioned. Excellent professors with superb qualifications excellent facilities due in large measure to many bond me uh, measures that we have passed, including in the San Diego Community College District, and high standards that are enforced by our accreditors and by ourselves. In the public sector, both the universities and the community colleges offer their education at the lowest cost in the nation. President Barack Obama wants to take this another step uh, forward. He wants to ensure that the nation's community colleges become tuition-free within the next two years. Now, we are already working on that in San Diego County. One community college district, the Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District, are they here today? Somewhere, yes. Uh, have already in, uh, instituted a program along those lines. And stay tuned because one from the San Diego Community College District is hard on its heels. So 
free, free, not only free tuition, but free textbooks. Uh, I, yes. I was, I was in a, a bookstore not too long ago at a university and passed a psychology textbook that was $270. Um, uh, amazing. We also provide programs and curricula that are adapted to the 21st century. It is a fact that most new jobs today and 70% of future jobs require more than a high school education and some form of post-secondary education. So when someone says, not all kids are going to college, not all kids should be trained to go to college, it's just not true because all, all kids and all people will need to learn some form of, um, of um, uh, uh, post-secondary education. Let me um, conclude by saying these things. Uh, first of all, the good news about my personal journey is that I made the decision in 1993 to move to San Diego. Uh, here I found a world entirely different from the cities I had known, most definitely different from Baltimore. I found that this is a place where multiculturalism actually exists and is a cherished characteristic. We are so fortunate in that and should never take it uh, uh, for granted. I am very moved today, emocionada, um, when, I look, when I look around the room and see this rainbow of people. And so, uh, Andrea asked you to stand earlier, but now you've eaten breakfast, so I'm going to give you your, your last exercise of the morning. I'd like us to see who's in the room today, and this will give us a good idea as to who we are. If you are African American, please stand and remain standing. Yes. If, if, you, if you are white or European American, would you please stand? If you are Asian, Pacific Islander, Filipino, would you please stand? If you are Latino, would you please stand? Christian, please stand. Jewish, please stand. Muslim, please stand. Physically challenged, if you cannot stand, raise your hand. Gay, please stand. Lesbian, please stand. The whole room is on its feet. Just look at us, look at us here today. The most handsome group of people you can find in the United States of America. We, we are not some self-segregated group. We are a rainbow and proud to be that. Look at us today and let me know if you agree we are the beloved community. Thank you.